Hey, Void. How are you doing? So, watching uh, through my collection now. Still trying to do roughly alphabetical, but the next movie I've been putting off just because I've seen it once. It was one of those bargain basement movies I just picked up arbitrarily, so it's not a movie I'm in a hurry to get to. So, I decided to watch a film that's been a very long time that I've seen, but was still an A, so I thought, okay, let's just slot this one in. Besides, this one was viewed as a bit much, and so I didn't want to watch it with my partner around because she's not into that sort of thing, so. Audition. Good old Takashi Miike. Well, so. This movie's pretty infamous in the Asian horror world. And, but for me, this is just okay. I mean, it's not a bad movie by any means. And it's got some good imagery. But it kind of goes off the rails towards the end. And I'm not exactly sure what it's doing completely all the time. So it had been years since I'd seen this one. So. Let's uh, get started. So, um, uh, we're following a guy who got widowed years ago and he's finally trying to get a dating life going. However, he isn't very good at it. So he's like, he doesn't know how to meet women. So his friend suggests, hey, well, maybe we could do an audition. So essentially his friend's into movies, and they're going to be working on a movie coming up, so it figures, hey, you could, we can, then, then, well, the movie's not likely going to go through, so let's just do an audition, you can pick all these ladies, you know, get a chance to talk to them, and we'll see if everything clicks. And, well, one definitely clicks pretty quick. A mysterious wo uh, woman that uh seems to just you see her comp written composition really seemed to draw him in so and after me with her seems to get more and more obsessed with her eager to see uh her her name is asami now the more he looks into the past the uh, his friend looks into her the more he's cautioning her like there's something not right here and I can't get a hold of any of her references, and you don't really know anything about her, but Agabo is throwing caution to the wind and is going all in. However, uh, eventually, when uh, despite him promising to love only her, when she realizes that he has a son, uh, and therefore is loving someone other than her, well, she takes offense to that and punishes him. And then a very infamous scene involving uh, needles in many, many places, and eventually beginning to saw his feet off with piano wire. Good time. So, this movie was essentially a troll movie that uh, BK was trying to do because up until like the last 20 minutes, this one seems like a romantic drama with a little bit of comedy sprinkled in. It isn't until it gets to the end where it just goes balls to the wall crazy. So, and he essentially he wanted to kind of play with his audience that way. However, advertising pretty much gave away what this movie was going to be, so no one was really all that surprised. So, essentially, it's such a slow, banal build-up as it's a very basic romance-style story that is very dry towards the beginning that all of a sudden just goes to 11 at the last moment. So, he did do some investigation into Asami, but when he's finally drugged in just before the torture and somewhat during, we keep flashing to these surreal scenes about Asami's life as well as some of the horrible things she's doing and essentially like some other murders that may or may not have happened. It's, you kind of get unclear of what's actually happening, what he actually knows about, particularly like the victim in the bag and what he's just kind of imagining. 
it's like it's kind of unclear whether that victim in the bag is actually there or not but it kind of makes sense that it would be given what's been happening to everyone else who's crossed Asami's path it seems that when things go wrong she's quick to punish people yeah so a lot going on and there's some good creepy imagery of just her sitting at home, just waiting next to the phone, waiting for him to call. So there's some good imagery, and the and the torture scene is definitely fairly intense. But you have to sit through a lot in order to get to it. And some of the surrealness is more baffling than effective at times. So as much as this one definitely is a classic, it's not my favorite. And so I rarely return to audition. So it's it had been years since I'd seen it. It's probably going to be years since till I get around to it again. I'm more of a one miss call kind of guy for Mike. Or if going kind of the extreme runs, his episode of Masters of Horror is something else. So or it's been a long time since I've seen Ichi the Killer. So we'll see where that one matches up. Anyway, the audition is still well put together. Asami, the actress for Asami is very, does a very good job portraying, alluring, yet something off. It does a good job of that. Um, I give it a six MacGuffins. Like, a lot of people would rate it higher, and I can understand why. But just personally, I'm just giving it six. It's worth seeing, but... It's just not my favorite for Asian extremes. Yeah. Audition. Uh, this one's circa 1999, if I didn't say it earlier. I might have missed that. But if, if you're in Asian horror and haven't seen it, you do owe it to yourself to see it at least once. It is a staple for Japanese horror, so I do recommend it. Just once in a while. Take care, bud.